here we are, Stratford upon Avon. Pretty much deserted, it's amazing. Stratford upon Avon, the jewel of somewhere, wherever it is in England. Home to the bard himself, Stratford upon Avon is not only a town of culture, but one of science too. In fact, we have come here to study one of the most important laws of the universe Newton's Third Law. And it is here, in Stratford upon Avon, on the River Avon, that we can see Newton's Third Law in action. During my time here, I became a bit of an expert on Shakespeare and even completed a qualification and became a steward of Shakespearean knowledge. Stratford Avon is the birthplace of Sir William Shakespeare. This great thinker and playwright is responsible for some of the world's most famous quotes. For example, to be or not to be. Omelette. Hamlet. Sorry, Hamlet. Good night, sweet prince and flights of angels. Sing thee to thy rest. Just read it up there. Romeo, oh Romeo, where ho for our father? Alas, poor Yorick. I was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met you. And perhaps the most famous court of all, as far as science is concerned, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Oh, Shakespeare. Sorry? Oh, what, what do you mean Shakespeare didn't stare at so, what? What New I thought Newton nicked that off him because it was quite catchy. Newton came up with that. Exactly. It's quite clever, wasn't he? You think I would have known that? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law is responsible for so many things we see happening around us in our everyday lives. Yep, swans, boats, uh, I think, I think they're geese, they all use Newton's third law to move. They push one way, the water pushes back because they have a lighter mass, they're the ones that move. Simple as that, that's all it is. When one force exerts a force on another object, that object pushes back with an equal magnitude force in the opposite direction. Here, the propeller exerts a force in the air, and the air exerts an equal and opposite force on the propeller. Throughout my travels, I've found examples of Newton's third law all over the world. And it's here, in the town of Windsor, we can see planes flying overhead using Newton's third law. There he goes. Air is forced one way, the plane moves the other way. Is it also an example of conservation of momentum or recoil? But it is actually Newton's third law in action. Another way of saying Newton's third law is if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. Not quite as catchy, but it gets the meaning across there. You can also see here another example of Newton's third law in action. So if the forces are equal, why does it look like one object moves and the other one doesn't? The propeller exerts a force on that entire body of water we call the sea. And the sea exerts an equal and opposite force on the propeller. This is Newton's third law in action. Okay? And the reason why the boat moves and the sea doesn't particularly is the boat has a smaller mass. It loses the battle. But it's applying an equal and opposite force. It's an example of the Newton's third law there. Or as the bard Shakespeare himself might have said. It really is a quite spectacularly transfluent example of the beautification of Newton's third law, a shining crucifixio of human application of those ingeniously supplicant laws. Shakespeare can be tough for people not as intelligent as myself, so in plain English, boat push on water, water push on boat. Clear? Brilliant. That was quite beautiful what I just said then, wasn't it? It was almost like poetry. I mean, um, it just goes to show why I'm one of, you know, I've got the reputation as one of science's best ever um, communicators. Here we are in Andalusia, in Spain, to see if Newton's third law also applies here. They are always the Here I am in this Spanish room pool where I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law with this actress here.
quite far, didn't she? So there you have it. Newton's third law applies everywhere, even here in Spain. Anyway, yeah, so because I've got the greater mass, I have a smaller acceleration. She had a much greater acceleration, which is why she flew off to the side. It's very quiet. Very quiet person. Oh, breath quite long as well, can't she? In fact, it's a universal law, and uh, that's why Newton was quite a clever fella. Back to Stratford upon Avon. Walking is another great example of Newton's third law in action. When you walk, you push on the ground, but what you're actually pushing against is an entire planet. Yes, planet Earth. You push on the Earth, the Earth pushes on you. You move forwards and the Earth moves backwards by a pathetic amount, less than the fraction of the nucleus of an atom. I had a manicure, to be honest, but the toenails look a bit of a mess. What? Pe ped pedicure? Whatever. Yes, when you walk, you actually cause the Earth itself to move in the opposite direction to what you're walking. Don't believe me? Well, let me explain. This common playground toy ride thing is a really good way to show Newton's third law, as I now will demonstrate. My foot exerts a pushing force on the playground thing, and the playground thing exerts a pushing force on my foot. This time, because I'm the one with the greater mass, I appear to stay where I am, and the playground thing moves, even though we're experiencing exactly the same force, but in opposite directions. With the Earth, see the way around. I'm light, so I move, and the Earth doesn't move much at all. Nearly died then. No, I don't have five seconds to be enough, I think. Yeah. This time, it's my mass that is greater than that of the thing I'm applying the force to. So it applies an equal and opposite force, but this time it moves because it's a smaller mass than I. To be a Newton's third law pair, then four rules have to be satisfied. Number one, you've got to have the same magnitude, i.e. size. You've got to act in opposite directions. You've got to be the same type of force, both gravitational forces or both pushing forces, for example. And finally, number four, they must act on different objects. This is really important. Here's a few examples. Okay, notice they're both pushing forces. Water pushes on all, all pushes on water. And here, another example. Gravitational forces. The Earth pulls the Moon, but equally the Moon pulls the Earth of exactly the same size force, but in the opposite direction. It's the fact that the Moon exerts a gravitational force on the Earth as well that causes tides. Brian, I thought you said Shakespeare was dead. He's, well, he's not. He was, he was that behind me then? Shakespeare be quiet. Anyway, um, yeah, so one of the mistakes people make with Newton's third law is with weight. So, what is the Newton's third law pair of my weight? Put your hands up, viewers, if you think this is the answer. So if, so if you said that the contact force of the floor on me was the Newton's third law pair to my weight, then you'd be wrong, and you'd be wrong for two reasons. Here's the correct answer. So you can see the contact force is wrong because one, it's not a gravitational force, that's a point of weight. Weight is a gravitational force, so therefore the Newton's third law pair also has to be a, gra a gravitational force. Yeah? And also it's acting on, um, it's, it's, probably, it's acting on, a, it's got to be acting on a different object as well. So the gravitational force of me on the Earth and the gravitational force of the Earth for me. That's the Newton's third law. Wasps attacking me now. That's the Newton's third law there. It's just rubbish, isn't it? Rubbish. That's all from Stratford upon Avon. Until the next time. It looks like him. Speaks like him as well. How infinite in faculty, in form, how express, alive.